One of the most useful options that you can get with your new Jeep Gladiator or Wrangler are the auxiliary switches that would normally be installed right here in the front center console. Now, I don't have these switches in my Gladiator, but what I do have is this awesome new kit from Z Automotive that is gonna let us add some OEM auxiliary switches and as well swap my Mojave locker switch over to a Rubicon switch that can control both rear and front lockers for our new axles that we're putting on the Jeep and give us two more buttons that we can use to control something down the road. So what we have here is the Z Automotive switch assembly kit. This is their solid state control box. This is where we can wire up to eight accessories into and power. And we're gonna be able to tie that in to our OEM switches. We're gonna have four switches and these are gonna have very OEM like functionality that we can control through the touchscreen display in our Jeep. And we're gonna be able to set these switches to be either constant on, remembering whether they're on after we turn on and off the vehicle, or be momentary latch, so they just go on as we press them, exactly like you would from the factory. And then with our locker switch, if you don't have a Rubicon, you can add this in. Maybe you've added lockers to your factory axles, maybe you're upgrading your axles like we are, and you're gonna be able to control your lockers just like you would from the factory with the addition of being able to turn on the front locker only. So we'll be able to have rear and front or fr rear and front at the same time. We'll be able to connect up accessories and program these buttons to be able to be used if we connect something to one of the additional fuse uh, ports on the switch assembly. So the only other accessory we need for this is you do need a Taser JL. Uh, you do need a Taser JL Mini from Z Automotive. These switches are not included with the kit, so I just want to make sure that's clear. You have to order these separately. And what I have heard from the team at Z Automotive, if you have a factory Rubicon, you already have this switch, you don't want to mess with it, you like the way it works, they tell me they're adding a firmware update to the Taser JL that'll leave this alone allow you to add the four auxiliary switches and then the four additional fuses on here, you'll be able to set up steering wheel controls. So you can have your factory locker, sway bar, off-road plus button, four auxiliary switches that you can program through your touchscreen. And then I can't wait to see this. Hopefully they add the firmware before I put this video out. But if not, I hear it's coming. We'll be able to control four more devices or accessories through controls on our steering wheel without adding any panels or touch screens or anything like that to our dash. We can keep it nice and clean and uh, just simple looking if that's what you want. So some of the other things that come in the kit, this is Z Automotive's magic control box. This is going to allow us to tie in the system to the Jeep system. They include the wiring to go to our battery uh, underneath the hood. We've got a uh, 80 amp breaker. We have a uh, wiring harness for all of this. Now I'm told, oh yeah, and we get this nice bracket that we're gonna put under our hood, mount it to the side of our Jeep over the battery, and this will sit right on top. So this is a pre-production model. When we release this video, you'll be able to go on Z Automotive's website and pick one up for yourself. So I'll put a link down in the description below to their site. Uh, keep an eye out for it. And if you're looking for a nice, easy way to add switches to your Jeep, this looks like a great kit. I haven't seen any other kits out on the market that offer this level of OEM look and ease of install. And what was really important to me is if I leave a switch on and I turn my vehicle off, when I turn my vehicle back on, I want the switch to remember that it was on. So if I have something like my radio connected to one of these auxiliary switches, my communications radio. I want it to turn on and off every time I turn my vehicle on and off. But I also want the ability to have switches not remember or stay on when the vehicle is off. So if I turn, if I want my radio on and I turn my Jeep off, this install is supposed to be super easy and straightforward. So let's get to it. So we're gonna start with the engine bay side of this installation. Then we will fish the wire into the cab of the Jeep pull apart a little bit of the dash. This is really easy. I'm sure any of you guys watching this can do it. Uh, if I can do it, you guys can do it, guaranteed. 
And if your engine bay doesn't quite look like this, that's because we have a supercharged V8 out of a Dodge Demon in here. But this area should be the same if you have a 3.6 liter. And if you have a diesel, they'll be reversed. And that's a good point, whether or not this bracket will work on a diesel. This bracket is gonna sit right here with these bolts and right over top of our battery and let us mount uh, the control box on top here. Now my battery is raised up about an inch, so you should have a little bit more clearance underneath yours so that we could fit our motor in and answer the question on the diesel engine. Since we have one, you can connect it to the same bolt spots on here as well. It looks like it wouldn't really matter. Oh, uh, maybe. No, I think, you know what? I feel like you can drill some different holes. So it doesn't, I don't think it'll fit over top of these big plugs right here. You've got too much in the way there. Um, I've got some, I have some aftermarket breakers here, but I don't think that would matter. I think this is gonna get in the way. But what you could do is drill a couple new holes in this bracket and put it right here over top of your fuse box if you wanted. Um, but I'm gonna provide that feedback to Z Automotive that this is a little bit specific to the 3.6 liter. I don't have a 392. Well, I mean, I kind of do, but I don't have a factory 392 to see if this will fit in. But I think most of most of the people watching either have the two liter turbo or the 3.6 liter V6, in which case your battery's gonna your battery's gonna be right here. Bolt that right up and go. And you can see now how this is going to mount. Just like that. What I wanna do is get this mounted up. There we go. Oh, we even have some extra fuses in the cover in case we blow one. And we want our fuses on the side with the two slots because that way we can route any wires coming into this underneath and we don't have to see anything coming through the cover. So these are all pre-threaded, which is excellent. So the other piece we need to mount on here is our breaker. And if you want to uh, help support making this content and the channel, uh, I do have a Patreon page. I'll put a link up on the screen. I do uh, behind the scenes updates and little videos on there and uh, the occasional garage sale item and I answer a lot of questions. If uh, I miss them in the comments here, Patreon, it's a great place to catch up with me. Let's get this installed in the engine bay. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna connect to the battery. And as I mentioned, we're gonna have switches inside the vehicle that we can control whatever we wanna connect up to any of these eight fuses. So we're gonna connect lockers. We're gonna do a pneumatic sway bar disconnect. We're gonna do some lights, a radio, a power system with inverter. Um, so we're gonna use use up all of this. And so this means that you don't have to have a whole bunch of relays hanging out underneath of your hood. And if you didn't order or buy a, a Jeep with the auxiliary switches, this is gonna be a great way to add that in without adding a ton of extra wiring. And what I don't want is a control panel sitting on my dash that everybody can see that it's there. I think my only feedback that I have so far is I would definitely wrap these positive wires because we have sharp, or not sharp, but we have metal edges here. And over time, you know, things vibrate in the engine bay. We're going over a lot of bumps. And if anything is touching metal that is a wire, you do run the risk of possibly wearing through the the rubber outer sheath. And if you do that on a positive wire, then that is not good. And I had originally attached this to the wrong point here. This actually goes up to the upper one. And we'll screw that back down to the right terminal this time. This is gonna be for our negative bus bar. So what's nice about this is you can run your positive and your negative wire all back to this so you're not finding different negative ground locations on the vehicle if you don't want to. You can tap in your negative and then your positive all into this box, which is why we have the other the other terminal there. For the next part of this install, we need to fish a wire 
through a little gap in right here. We need to get the wires under the hood and out the other side. And if you don't have something to fish it through, because you need a straight rod, look at this. Take your antenna off your Jeep, and now you have a nice fish for your wires. Move this trim piece here. All right, okay. Gracefully remove that. If we pull back this foam temporarily, I'll wedge it in there. Jam our light in there. And you can see there's a little spot right there that we can fish a wire through. So this harness comes apart. We can disconnect it. This is the inside. This is the under the hood side. And these are gonna plug into there. A three prong connection, four prong connection that come in here. And then we've got a positive power wire that we're gonna be using to power something on the inside. And then we will pull this through, ever so gently tuck that through. I suppose you could also remove your cowl. There we go. Okay, that is all tucked in real nice there. So we've managed to hide that wire all behind this piece of trim and then down behind this trim. We'll hide this behind this triangle piece, this wedge piece that we'll put back in here. So you don't see that wire at all. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull my glove box out because we need to route the wire down this top hole into behind the dash. And then we'll get to pulling the, the dash apart here. And it's really easy to release. Just push this up here and then this will release. We need to get this through the dash somehow. So put that through there until we feel it coming through. Now the next part is we gotta pop this panel off, this whole ignition panel. And then we can get access to a screw under here and then we can swap our switches out. Yep. These tool removal tools are really handy for getting leverage, but we just got a few clips under there. We'll disconnect the control wire and the ignition wire for the uh, start stop button or start up button. And we've got one screw here that we need to take out and then we can drop this whole panel out. And then we've got our whole panel here that, uh, out of here and so now we can disconnect our factory locker switch which we aren't going to be using now if you have a rubicon and you were just adding auxiliary switches you could just leave your rubicon switch in here and you can either leave it tied into the factory and free up those other four fuse connections for a steering wheel control later, or you could plug this into our harness and have completely configurable controls over your lockers. This is what I'm told. I haven't tested all of this because you guys are seeing all this in real time, but that is my understanding of how the system works. I'm sure Z Automotive on their website will have plenty of documentation on uh, how all this works once the product goes live. You know, some little alignment pins that guide everything into place. We'll put our bolts back in, our screws. What we need to do is two things. We've got um, connection to the CAN bus system here under the dash, which is where we can port in whatever we need, I guess that's how that works. And we have a little uh, 
connector that looks like the rest of them on here with the glove box out in between the dash here that to reach your hands around and grab that from this side. And then we can connect this to the one that goes to the engine bay. Plug in our new switches. Actually get the right connector. <laughs> that was the original Rubicon connector. Spin this that way, like that. And then the last piece we need to go in here, we need our little black box from Z Automotive. Only goes in one way. There we go. This is supposed to have a green LED on it. Right there, let's make sure that all works. The automotive indicates that we should see a green light on our little box. Ah, yes, we do. Excellent. So that means everything's working. We're going to reassemble now. And so we're just going to do what we just did in reverse. And we'll find a nice little home for our black box in behind here. There we go. Just click into place. Black box has a nice little spot back there. And we'll fire the screw back in. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. Auxiliary switches, Rurikon switches, Offer Plus switches, 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 switches. And then I think what I'm gonna do before I finish this off, I'm gonna reroute this wire a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna put a couple spacers under here because we've got the Rubicon, or the uh, battery lift, the battery tray lifted up. So I'm gonna put some, some shims under here to bring this up off of this a little bit. You guys won't have to do this. And I think I might, uh, might give this a quick coat of paint before final assembly. We need to make some configuration changes in our taser. As I mentioned before, you do need a taser, which you should have one if you have a modified Jeep, or even if you don't have a modified Jeep, if you want cool features like uh, turn cam, when you turn your turn signal on, super handy. I'll put a link up in the corner to my taser video if you want to know all about why you should have one but what we have to do is go in here and disable our factory lockers make sure our factory sway bar switch is disabled but we all have to tell the vehicle now we have these aux switches so that we can control them through the uconnect screen here and uh, that's what the magic black box does so let's try this out here so with the taser, give you a quick rundown how to access the taser menu by going down to your audio menu, holding down your left arrow and your cancel button. Sway bar no. Okay, so we already have sway bar no because this is a Mojave. Power steering no because we removed that with our engine swap. We don't have a trailer brake. Locker. We're going to set this to none. And we're gonna set this to aux switches to yes. Paddles, I don't know if you guys saw that go by the paddles. I wanna to try to put paddles, paddle shifters like the 392 in the uh, Demonator. So now in our settings, we should have the auxiliary switch feature here and we can see we have menus for all four auxiliary switches, latching momentary so this is the type, whether it's latching, stays on and off when you press it, momentary only while you press it, power source, battery or ignition, so you can have it always stay on when you leave it on or come on and off with the ignition and then recalled last state, which is great. So if you, you turn something on, it'll come on every time with the ignition if you want it to. And then we've got one for each auxiliary switch. So down below, we've got our auxiliary switches now, and I've just got the vehicle in the run position and you can see each one of these come on and off. Oh, that one's probably out of the camera view, but come on and off because they're all set to latch. And then we've also got our sway bar button, which would activate that other relay, our off-road plus button, which activate the other relay. And then we don't have anything hooked up yet because we're gonna swap our axles and put lockers on. But if maybe you were putting lockers in your factory axles, you could now have a factory switch to control them with. Now that we know all of this works, I'm gonna pull this out I'm going to uh, clean this up a little bit, clean up the wiring, paint this, and we'll be right back with the 
finished version. All right, there we go. The installation is finished and we've got everything buttoned up. I put a little black spray paint on this bracket and softened up some of the edges. I did talk to the guys over at Z Automotive and uh, because this was a prototype bracket, uh, it wasn't finished the way they want it to for the retail kit and I'm told this will be powder coated and finished just a little bit better, but I didn't mind cleaning that up a little. So there you go. Uh, we're ready to go. We're gonna go get our axles put into the demonator and uh, then we can wire up our uh, our axle relays to here. So first one is gonna be our rear lockers, our front lockers, off-road sway bar, and then our four auxiliary switches. This will all be in the documentation if you're unclear as to what to wire up here, but it's gonna be super clean, super easy. And if we ever need to get any access to anything, we can just pop that right off and away we go. Let me know what you guys think of this down in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. Leave a like. I appreciate it a ton. I'll see you guys in the next video.